The next chapter is lymphatic, the lymphatic system. And naturally, this, these two chapters go hand in hand because there is a structural um, oh, closeness between the vessels of the circulation and the lymphatics and what they do. Okay? The lymphatic system has two basic functions. Okay? They provide a residence for the immune cell, the cells of the immune system. All right? So monocytes, uh, lymphocytes, they will all be found in parts of the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system, they'll use the lymphatic system to travel through um, the body. Okay? The second function is that it removes excess fluid from the tissue, all right? <clears throat> it removes excess fluid from the tissue. And the lymphatic sy the lymph system is uh, composed of vessels, nodes, and other tissues and organs, lymph nodes, uh, the thymus, the spleen, they're all part of this system, okay? And then the lymph itself, the lymph, is the fluid that goes into the vessel once it's picked up, okay? So once this, this excess fluid is picked up, we call it lymph, and then it travels through the lymph and then gets back to the blood vessels, all right? Let's talk about blood vessels in general, okay? So if we talk about, we go, I think I drew this before, or you, there was a picture of it. We have an artery to arteriole, Right, and then it gets down to, let's say, we'll call this a capillary, okay? Capillary, and eventually it gets over to the venous side, right? Well, let's call it like that. So blood's gonna flow through this capillary. When blood flows through this capillary, what do we know about this capillary bed? Let's call it a capillary bed, so it goes like this. All right, what do we know about this capillary bed? What happens to blood pressure? What happens to fluid as it goes into the capillary bed? What's the pressure on the arterial side versus the venous side? It's higher, okay? So over here we have, we'll just put higher pressure. And what that pressure does, we talked about hydrostatic pressure, we talked about colloidal pressure, which is going to force what? What happens across the capillary, the capillary bed? What's forced out, what's forced, what's pulled back? Water's forced out, okay? Water, <coughs> fluid, water's forced out, on the arterial side, and some of it is pulled back on the venous side, okay? Now, I purposely did not draw the number of arrows that, I actually did it purposely like this. What do you see the number of arrows on the arterial side versus the venous side? There's more on the arterial side, right? So there's more water that's being pushed out then is coming back to the venous circulation. So if I pushed more water out through the vessels than what came back, what do I have? I have a net loss across the capillary, right? So I have less volume coming back through the venous circulation. What would that do? Decrease volume, right? If that volume went back to the heart, okay, if I got, if I got, if I sent that back to the heart, what would that do? What would that do to stroke volume? Hmm? Lower. It would lower stroke volume. What would that do to cardiac output? Lower. It would lower. What would it do to blood pressure? It would lower. Does that happen? Yes or no? 
No, it doesn't. Okay? Because that excess fluid is actually, is actually picked up by the lymph vessels. And they kind of intertwine inside these capillary beds. So in green, you have these lymph vessels that are then going to fuse and become some nodes in here. All right, they're going to come together. And eventually, they're going to pick up fluid and it's going to empty, dump it back into the venous circulation. So the fluid actually goes back through here so that it dumps back into the venous circulation. Now, how much blood is coming back to the right atrium is equal to how much was put out, as long as you're at rest, okay? So that excess fluid, all those extra arrows that are lost on the arterial side are picked up by the green vessels, the lymphatic vessels, and returned back to the venous circulation. Overall, there's no net loss of volume, okay? Pretty simple, right? Yeah, right, okay? And it's transported through the lymph. This is what it looks like, okay? You have some lymph on the, on the left here in green, you have lymph vessels. And you can see they kind of pervade throughout the entire body. Right? There are collections of areas where there are um, increased lymph nodes. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we, on the right, you have the primary lymphatic organs, the thymus and the red bone marrow, and then secondary lymphatic organs, tonsils, lymph nodes, right? the spleen, mucus-associated lymphoid tissue or malt, Peyer's patches in the stomach, and then more lymph nodes. Right? There are three areas in your body where you have collections of lymph, lymph nodes. Cervical, around the neck. Okay? Inguinal, around the groin. And axillary, around the armpits. Okay? How many of you have ever gone to the doctor with a really bad cold? Sinus infection. All right? what is he? He go, you go to him or her, and they start looking at you, and they feel around your face. Where else do they feel? Your neck. That's the cervical lymph node. Because if you have a sinus infection in here, a lot of times those lymph nodes become swollen. Okay? Why do they become swollen? They have extra fluid, yes. They have extra fluid because now they've been activated to produce more white blood cells to help fight that infection. Okay? There's fluid going in and there's fluid coming out, but there's a lot those there the germinal centers of the lymph nodes are producing more lymphocytes, more white blood cells to help fight that infection. Okay? The lymph itself, all right, so fluid leaves the capillaries, it's not reabsorbed. That fluid moves into the lymph vessel and it becomes lymph. Mainly it's water, some dissolved solutes, small amounts of proteins. But this is the problem. It also, it's like washing and then the, you're washing the cells with the fluid of, around the capillary, and then you're washing all the junk that the cells are getting rid of, okay? So the lymph is kind of like this sewer system where all the stuff gets in, cellular debris, bacteria, viruses, pathogens, uh, cancer cells. They get in there, okay? And now that filtration system has to clean it out. Right, and that's, what's ha that's kind of what's happening in the lymph vessels and in the lymph nodes, okay? Before it gets back to the venous circulation, it has to be cleaned and filtered in order for it to not cause any problems once it enters the blood again, okay? The capillary, so we talk about lymph vessels. We have the capillary bed, and those green vessels that I drew earlier, they are lymph capillaries. They are small, thin-walled vessels that are close-ended, okay? They kind of look like this, all right? So they have a closed end, all right? So that's one cell, and then they have this cell, and then they'll have another cell that wraps around there. These are all endothelial cells. 
What do you notice about how I drew those cells? How do those, how do these cells kind of orientate themselves? One, two, three, four. Think, look at their position. End to end. Hmm? End to end. What about end to end? What about the ends? Are they end to end or is one over the other? Okay, they overlap. Okay, and because they overlap, they actually form this kind of flap valve. Have any of you ever fixed a toilet? From, you know, probably not. Okay? Well, you know when the toilet flushes, right? There's the tank in the back, and when you push the handle down, what it does, there's a couple different mechanisms how it works. One is what we call a flapper. There's a piece of rubber that you pull up and allows the water to drain through and it flushes the toilet. And then that piece of rubber flaps back. It's a one way valve, right? It could only go one way when you pull it open. Okay? This is similar to that. What happens is that fluid is pushed in through here, but because of the flap, it doesn't go back out. So it can only go one way, okay? So if pressure builds up in the tissue, it will cause fluid to, to move into the, into the lymph vessel, become lymph, and then it can't escape because of the flap-like valve. Okay, so it prevents it from escaping back into the tissue. Okay. <clears throat> so those are the, the overlapping endothelial cells, those flaps, right? They direct which way with which way fluid enters the capillaries, right? So it'll always go one way. And then you have some anchoring filaments some connective tissue that holds the endothelial in place so that it doesn't just float away, okay? Other lymphatic capillaries, there's a specialized one in the, in the gut, in the GI tract that are called lacteals. They're a little bit different in structure and in function, right? Because they absorb lipid soluble material, all right? So lipids are absorbed through them and we'll talk about that when we talk about the digestive system in a few weeks. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Again, you can see the interspersion of the lymphatic capillaries with the capillary bed. There's actually more of them than there are capillaries. And then you can see how the overlap of the endothelial cells directs the movement of fluid into the capillary and towards lymph node. Okay, there is some similarities in terms of structure of the lymph vessels to veins, okay? What do veins have that they might share in this? What is unique to veins in terms of structure? Valves. Valves, okay? These lymph vessels have valves, similar to what you see in veins, that help prevent backflow, okay? There's no heart that's pumping this fluid through, okay? So we have to rely on the same structure as veins in terms of skeletal muscle pumping, or in terms of uh, the, our respiratory pump, and in terms of the valves that are present that help move the fluid through the lymphatic system. Okay, here's a picture that's not in your book, and I wanted to show it kind of looks like this. There's the, down here at the bottom you see the blood capillaries, and the lymph capillaries and fluid moves in through the lymph vessels, eventually to a lymph nodes, and then you have collecting uh, lymphatic vessels with valves, and they continue to move back towards up the system from a lymph node to a lymphatic trunk to a duct, eventually into the venous system before it gets back to the heart. Okay, so it's capillaries, vessels, You'll, there'll be multiple lymph nodes that we're gonna, uh, that we'll, you will run into along the way, then to a trunk, to a duct, eventually that fluid empties into the venous blood, right? It's mixed with the venous blood. Okay, here's another picture of the capillaries, you've seen before, and I like this picture of the valves 
of the end of the lymph capillaries that show your flap-like valves with the overlaying, overlapping of the endothelial cells. Okay? Questions? Okay? So the movement of this fluid depends upon hydrostatic pressure. Okay? Pressure builds up in the tissue and it forces fluid into the lower pressure ca lymph capillaries. Okay? And the pressure inside builds up, right? And then they close the, the valves behind it. Okay? And lymph moves from small vessels to vessels of bigger size, so capillaries to vessels to trunks, ultimately to ducts, and eventually return to the blood circulation that we just talked about. Okay? So, if lymph, the lymph system picks up all of that cellular debris, okay, this is also where cancer cells go to move. Okay? Throughout your body, every day, there are cells that start to grow abnormally. Okay? And our immune system has ways of identifying them and killing them off before they cause problems. But in some cases, that the, the, a cancer will escape the immune system, immune system detection, detection, not detection, de, uh, will escape detection and start to grow. And in other cases, a cell will move from one area to another, okay? Typically, with surgical uh, treatment of cancer, they will remove a tumor, and they will also get what's called margins, the edge of the tumor, and they will take nearby lymph nodes. Why are they taking no those lymph nodes? To make, sure they spread. to make sure that it doesn't spread. So they'll take those lymph nodes, they will freeze them, and they will section them and, uh, into small, uh, look on the microscope, a pathologist will look at them, and determine if there are any irregular cells in there, okay? And if they're clear, then we can basically say that the cancer hasn't spread. It hasn't, you know, hasn't metastasized, moved from one spot to another, okay? And they're mainly transported in the lymph. They could be transported in the blood, but more than likely it's the lymphatic system that they use, okay? We'll stop there. We will finish the lymphatic lecture on Wednesday. So we're going to finish the whole chapter on Wednesday. Go through, uh, read it. It is, sets up, really, it's, it talks about the structure of the lymphatic system because it'll set up the residence where the immune system is really found in the body. What is our next test? Our next test is the Friday before spring break.